A worldwide diaspora has left a quarter of a million people at the foot of a space station. Cultures collide in real life and virtual reality. The city is literally a weed, its growth left unchecked. Life is cheap and data is cheaper. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Bar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler free review of Lavi Tidar's Central Station. Central Station is a 2016 novel by Lavi Tidar. It is a fix up novel. Uh, coolly enough, we don't get those very often these days. Um, and it is told in first person. It also is a standalone, though it it does set up a world that has following novels that it's it's not really part of a series as far as i could tell and still only thing i've read and i was very satisfied with it so this is actually my third tdr book though uh the first one um no actually this is, this is my second sorry it's the third one i've reviewed i uh, read girl the pop belly god and then i read this and then i read the circumference of the world but i had that review go out before this um so anyways uh this is a story set around Central Station, which is diverse and cosmopolitan. Uh, it's Tel Aviv, essentially, in the future. Uh, mankind has gone to the stars. And man, well, rather, a man starts to write and tell us a story, uh, skipping over what we already know, of course. Uh, Mama Jones is old and remembers when Central Station uh, served buses and not spacecraft. Uh, she is half Nigerian, uh, half Filipino. Uh, cranky, um, which is a boy he looks for his dad while he catches a raindrop nonchalantly before sending it upward in a buoyant bubble um, we have isabel character from chapter two she deals with robots well robotics which are very old and break down like cars but have passions and feelings like people well i guess that would make them people in reality right but some are actually people with their minds transferred to machines right these robots Weiwei is a chinese jewish man uh, we have many characters that live around the central station and they're even vampires uh, but data and cyberspace are involved with these vampires uh, there's lots of judaism uh, compared to western literature as well and uh, genes are controlled in this world um, many are born uh, from vats and labs rather than from wombs of uh, women uh, there's asteroid uh, pigeon from space uh, the world seems a little less prejudiced and full of strife and contention, but it certainly isn't a utopia. Uh, it gives you more of a cyberpunk vibe, so high-tech, low-life, right? And, and there's almost a magical realism um, element, right? So it's like magical realism, sci-fi, maybe. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, there's an obvious love for what is called genre the fiction or fantasy here, um, or sci-fi, right? Even though this seems more in the literary area, even though it also has this genre fiction parts i mean it's genre fiction right uh what's the difference that this is a good book that shows you there is no real difference um unless you want to be arbitrary about it uh since literary um is really only a label uh, so insecure elitists can make themselves feel important intelligent uh, and then you have an excuse to read it in english class and skip uh the stuff that people actually care about anyways uh honestly this was one of the most surprising reads of the year uh and like i said i had previously read goro the pop god uh, by tdr and really enjoyed that but this this knocked my socks off, okay? Uh, it's a vampire novel bordering on cyberpunk with an obvious love of genre fiction, but in a literary form. And it may be my favorite book of the year so far. Uh, and I read this pretty early in the year. It has not been supplanted so far. Though there's some good contenders. I've read a lot of good books. Um, this is just... I didn't have really any expectations going into it besides the fact that I should read more Tidar. Uh, and so maybe that's one of the reasons why I liked it so much, but it was just, it's just awesome. I, I loved this novel. I loved it. You should go read it. So I have someone else to talk to about it. Um, the biggest theme here, I feel like, is humanity uh, and how much that is worth. Uh, and, and even what humanity is, right, in a sci-fi setting, you kind of get that. And, and then kind of what isn't humanity as well. But it's also about family and what the makeup of that unit really looks like. And it's about all of the stuff I previously mentioned as well. So... Uh, anyways, um, you know, if, for me, reading this Judaism stuff from Tidar as well, who um, is Israeli, if I remember correctly, um, reminds me of some of my own youth where I, I went to a reform synagogue, <laughs> so I'm not like uh, really like ethnically there, but in some ways I was culturally on the cusp of that for a few years, and um, it was an interesting way to 
uh, in a sense, reconnect. Um, so anyways, those are just my thoughts. I really enjoyed this one. But uh, this one, Liam from Liam's Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.